Hello, hello, my sexy biz babes. So this is great for women and men, but we are going to be diving into kind of like what might hold us back in the bedroom. And maybe it's religion, um, your upbringing, Christianity, Catholicism, whatever it is. Lots of times we hold shame and we bring it into the bedroom. And then that's kind of like preventing us from having pleasure or we think pleasure is wrong. And ladies, especially this may hold you back. So God does want you to have orgasms. They, God wants you to have pleasure. So I brought on Heather Tucker. She's a Christian sex coach for engaged and married women. And we met on clubhouse. We've been talking about sex in rooms and having fun. And I just loved how she helps Christian women and, you know, just help get out of this shame and have better sex. So let's get into it. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Tia. <laughs> I'm so excited. So yes, like Tia said, uh, my name is Heather Tucker, and I am a Christian sex coach. And I've been doing this now for almost four years. And so having just a complete blast, not only with uh, other women, but also with myself, because I feel like as I get to know my body even better over the years, the more I'm able to share and help other people, which is like super, super fun. <laughs> Um, I am married to my husband, Chuck. We've been married for 20 years. Uh, we just hit 20 years in May. And then we have three amazing uh, men. Two of them are men. One of them is almost a, a man. So 25, 22, and 16. <laughs> and then I just became a grandma actually in December of 2020. So actually a pandemic baby came along. <laughs> So that's really fun. And yeah, he just turned, he just turned seven months. So first time grandma. <laughs> Ooh, love that. Yeah. Awesome. So what got you into this? Uh, my own experience for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, I can tell you my story. Is that, is that yeah, cool? let's hear okay. it. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll definitely ask you like more questions as they come. Okay. Yeah. So I actually grew up in a very strict Baptist background church. And so it was, you know, church on Sunday, church on Wednesday night, uh, all the youth group camps, uh, memorizing Bible study or Bible verses and earning badges for it and getting prizes for all the Bible verses that we memorized. Uh, both my sister and I, we have the same uh, upbringing. So it was very interesting when I hit, I want to say it was... Let's see. I think it was around 11. So it was after I started my period at 11, okay. I started to feel, you know, things in my body. So yeah. I started to feel horny. Uh, I had a really big stuffed animal that was a big teddy bear. And I talk about this all the time, how I used to sleep with this big teddy bear. And it was almost the size of me. And I used to put my leg over it. Like I did that for years. And one day I did the same thing, put the leg over and it rubbed up against my clit and it felt really, really good. And I was like, what, like what just happened? <laughs> and so I went and asked my mom about it. And she's like, oh, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. You know? And so she had no, like, she did not open up and tell me like what I was experiencing she didn't put no normalcy around it. She did not talk to me about how our bodies were created for pleasure, nothing like that. She just said, no, it's nothing, you know, uh, and that kind of thing. And then the older I got, when I started to date, uh, and of course I was like kissing boys and wanting to, you know, do all the things. Um, but all we were taught was like, don't have sex before you get married. And so there was always a stopping point that I would have with, <laughs> with guys um, I would go to like the, you know, they, I let them do things like touch my body, but, and finger me and things, but like, no, no intercourse. And so that went on for a really long time. And, um, then I met my ex-husband who was amazing. And, um, I thought he was amazing and he, and I got married. We had two beautiful boys and slowly his real personality started to come out very abusive person. So we actually only we're together for about five years. But you and got then, married. Did huh? the abuse come after marriage? No, yes, it was after marriage. So he basically said to me, 
that he was a Christian yeah. and that, you know, he wore like Christian shirts and he had all the CDs and everything. And I know, <laughs> and as soon as we got married, like his real side started to come out, um, very yelling, throwing stuff. Um, towards the end, he actually kicked me in front of my oldest son. So he still has that memory. Um, and that, I was like, that was the last straw. Like, I, I guess it was, I felt, and I think a lot of people in abuse do, they feel like if they, if they can keep it hidden and it doesn't impact the kids, then they'll stay. But, yep. uh, so and, many and, then times when it I doesn't, and then when it doesn't, it's like, oh no, no more kind of a thing. And so that was, that was definitely me. Well, so, often women are like, oh, they're not going to do, they're just doing it to me. They're just doing it to me. They're hmm. just, and then if they're doing it to you, especially if there's alcoholism, I'm not saying that he was, but like, oh, he was especially, thing. yeah, he was on. <laughs> with, especially with alcoholism, then Mm -hmm. what they're doing it to you. And then if your kid sees it, that's really bad. And then also I've heard like, after it keeps going worse and worse and worse. And at some point it usually does go to the kids. Yeah, exactly. Whether Mm -hmm. it's watching or visually, like that's just showing what to expect as yeah. like a kid they or take like in how everything. a man treats a woman like yeah and so when I saw that I was like good job. my dad was pretty abusive to my mom too and I didn't want like that kind of a life you know yeah so um our sex life was him was he was normally the leader of that like I had not fully come out of myself I was raised in the church so like all I knew was missionary style um doggy style but like all the other things I just said no you know to him when he would ask I just didn't feel safe to do that I thought I was going to get in trouble with God and and stuff like that okay and so wait, by wait, the time- so oh. real quick on that so okay. you felt like you couldn't try other things why like why was because I feel like other people think this way <laughs> like they're like oh well missionary is great like we'll just do that but why do <laughs> some people think that we're not supposed to do the other things is too sexy like what is it I I honestly don't know I mean I try and think back as hard as I can to you like did anyone actually tell me you can only do (laughs) missionary like I don't remember anyone actually saying you could only do like yeah there was a rule it just felt like a rule it felt like a boundary inside myself and um I had watched porn before you know Mm -hmm. I got married so I knew that there was all these other things that you could do but I think because I knew porn, you know, was wrong and, and, and all that. And I've had a lot of guilt around that. And I thought that if I did those things that the people did in the porn videos, that that would mean that I was, you know, like a slut or, you yeah. know, those kinds of things. And so, well, when your mom yeah. was like, don't touch that and didn't talk to you about sex. And she's like, oh, that's wrong. You know, yeah. even children growing up, men or little boys, little girls, and they're like, don't touch there. Don't do that then we have this like thing that it's wrong. And then we're told that porn's wrong. And then it's kind of like this societal religion thing that's ingrained in us to not be like sexual or like into sex or like liking sex because we're told that it's wrong. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. And one thing I forgot when my parents got divorced, we went to a therapist and the very first thing the therapist said is, um, how often do you masturbate? And I said, not at all. I've never done it. And so she made that recommendation to me. My mom found out about it as soon as we came out of the office and she went in and exploded all over the lady, pulled us out of that therapist session. And we never went back. And so to me, like masturbation was this thing that was evil. You're letting the demons in, you know, like that's literally how I felt. Yeah. And so yeah. How old were you? I was about 16 or 17. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then we wonder why women can't like let go and be in present. And well, first of all, they don't know how to self-pleasure sometimes Mm -hmm. or like how to get themselves off. And then it's wrong. And then pleasure's wrong. I remember feeling that way. I remember when I was younger, teenage years, like feeling like, okay, like what I thought, what I was ingrained in my brain is that God is always watching. God is always watching. Yes, you're right. Yeah. So like, I remember, you know, sitting (laughs) under the like, or you better not be doing uh, that because when God comes back and takes his people and like, he sees you doing that and then you're not taken with him. Yeah. (laughs) But I I forgot about that. You just like, Oh, I forgot about that thought. Yeah. Like my mom ingrained in my brain that God could hear my thoughts and he was always watching. So I remember when I first started masturbating, it was like in the bathtub and I was younger and like, you know, 
I felt like kind of wrong and that God was watching me like while I was masturbating (laughs) and like, but see what I did was like, well, this feels really good and I'm not having sex and I'm not doing anything wrong. So I kind of challenged myself. I remember like challenged myself to, okay, God's watching me, but he likes me to be happy, likes me to feel pleasure and I'm not having sex. So that's kind of like what I programmed in myself, Sure. even though like, yeah, nobody really talked about masturbation. I just decided that for myself. <laughs> yes. But, well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. But I, I know a lot of women are just like, that's wrong. So what did you do? You just didn't do it at all. Like, did you get out over that? I mean, I touched myself over the years, but I always felt guilt. Yeah. And I always felt shame. Yeah. And then I was always going to God asking for forgiveness and I was Mm -hmm. crying and thinking how horrible of a Christian I was. And, uh, you know, how do you still love me, God? And how, how have you not kicked me out of, you know, your, your team, team God, (laughs) you know what I mean? So I just was always crying about it all the time and feeling guilty. And by the way, it wasn't just sex that I had a pro it was even eating sugar, all the things that were told over the years, you know, that it could impact you in a negative way. So you just, you grow up and you have all these different thought patterns that come from like our family or the church or culture. And you think that they're real because the people Mm -hmm. that you love told them to you. And you think to yourself, well, if they love me, they wouldn't tell me something that was wrong. And so it's easier to trust, you know, when it's someone that you love. So then, you know, when you get older and you're starting to open yourself up to maybe the possibility of like not believing that way, it takes a lot of work, which is what I do with my clients in the sexual way is we go back, like we go all the way back to figure out where these roots actually started with the thinking. And we do a a crazy ton of work to like uproot them so that then they can become open to experiencing something new because when you have that block up there's like no, you can't penetrate that thing until you actually <laughs> go all the way back and that's what I had to do with myself I mean and it wasn't it was like four or five years ago so this is really recent like I'm 48 so it was when I was Ooh. 43 or 44 that I really started to question like this doesn't seem right uh, and I was like, I'm going to go look in the Bible for myself because I'm just wondering, is there a word that's, you know, is the masturbation word in the Bible is, uh, you know, uh, anal in the Bible is, um, eating out in the Bible. Like, I just wanted to know like all the things, you know, and like when I went and did my search like nothing, nothing was in there. And so I was like, what the fuck, man? I, then I was like, I feel like I've been lied to you. My yeah higher freaking life Ooh, how did that feel because I know I was, so yeah, many- no I was like yeah. pissed yeah. I was pissed now I didn't walk away from the church yeah I was just really mad at like the pastoral if anything like I was mad at the people in the pulpit because yeah. um they were the ones that were actually saying the things and here's the people and the audience listening just believing it and not really going and looking for themselves. I mean, maybe other people did, but I never did until I was 43 or 44. So some Um, people might've broken free, you know, sooner than others. But for me, it wasn't until I was 40. (laughs) So what was the big shift? So before all the way up till 43, like, how was your sex life? It was all right. It was kind of boring. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So what kind of made it boring? Orgasms. Like when I married Chuck. Yeah. Like when I married Chuck, um, he was so sweet, you know, he's so different from my ex-husband and um, he's still this way to this day. Like all he wants to do is make me happy. And that's when you find a good man, when everything that they want to do is for you. They go to work for you because they know that the paycheck is helping create this lifestyle. It's, it's helping to make you happy with the car that you want to drive, the house that you want to buy the clothes that you want to wear, you know, just, just the feet, the lifestyle feeling. And then because Chuck knew that the only way that I could really orgasm was when I was eaten out. So he did that and still does all the time. Like he literally will come into the bedroom scenario unless I'm in the mood where I want to attack him. And I just want to like tear off his pants <laughs> and suck his dick. But yeah. uh, most of the time he's going for me first. 
He makes sure that I'm satisfied because he can see as a man, once he's done, he gets tired and then he has no energy, you know, to then like reinvigorate himself and get energized again to then please me. So knowing himself and his body, um, he will please me. And then, um, yes, men put women first to orgasm. We oftentimes take longer. It doesn't mean all of us do, especially (laughs) when you get to know yourself. It can get faster and better. And, you know, when your partner knows yourself better, but yes, when you put a woman's pleasure first, not only are you more aroused, but then the guy can feel your arousal and hear your arousal and it will just make everything better. (laughs) And then you can have more. Yeah. It turns the guy on like, like Chuck will get hard watching me like have pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. Love that. Mm Mm-hmm. Sorry, uh, I interrupted in the middle. What were- <laughs> I have no idea where I was even at. Um, all I know is like when I married Chuck, it was different. And um, because he gave me that freedom to be myself um, with, you know, when we were raising the kids, he did that um, all, and everything. Um, I just started to feel more freedom that I could open myself up in that way. And um, at 43, I actually took myself to a dance class there was a burlesque dance class uh, that I had heard about, uh, about not even five minutes from my house. And so, yeah. And I had no idea it was in our town until one of my girlfriends posted a video and I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, I need to go there. And so she took me and that dance class is what really helped me to see other women feel really comfortable with their body and their own skin. And I saw them walking towards the mirror touching themselves in a sexual way, but it wasn't to attract a man. It was for themselves to actually get themselves into an empowered state. And I had never been given that freedom before. I never even touched my boobs before I went to dance class. Really. I just avoided them. I would be like this. Okay. Wait. So did that trigger you at all at the beginning or did it? Yeah. I mean, like when I first went to class, I was crying because I had never walked in a sexual way. Like, you know, we're shaking your hips, never walked wrong. like that, never wore heels uh, during dance, um, never watched myself and looked my eyes in the mirror as I'm walking towards myself and seen, like I could just cry right now, but like mm-hmm. when you see in your eyes and you understand everything that you've come through and then you're in that moment and then you just feel this bubbling up. I felt this bubbling up that was like rising to the surface and I just let her out. It was like the best feeling. Right? It just ever. makes you feel powerful and yes, sexy. Yes, it was the best feminine. feeling ever. And I cried and the teacher came over and she's like, oh, are you okay? I was like, I'm totally good. Like this is literally the first time that I have ever allowed myself to feel sexy you know? And so I just kept coming back. And then now every week I go, (laughs) Oh my God, I love it. How does that help you? Okay. Because I have to shout this from the rooftops as well, but like doing pole fitness and exotic dancing, I always did cheer and dance and sexy dancing, but as an adult, it has really helped my business. It's really helped my confidence. It's helped me keep a good sex drive and libido is connecting to my body, connecting to that feminine energy and that power. And it is, it's like a, a power that rises up in, in us as Mm -hmm. women, especially because it connects us to our body and our feminine energy. And it's like a power and you're a sexy, confident, feminine woman. Has it also helped you in like your business and your confidence and your, your relationship? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I found my voice. I, I've been running a, my own business since 2013, doing a, you know, a couple other things prior to, you know, sex coaching. But um, now, like, since uh, I've been helping people with sex coaching, which has been three years. So I, I'm really bad with math. So I'm like, what date was that? <laughs> <laughs> you guys do the math. Um, so beforehand, though, like I would get onto Zoom calls like this because I've been doing Zooms for like for freaking ever. And I would get on the client and I would have a really hard time just like looking at them even. Um, and like I do group coaching and like I was go- always going like this, like just kind of like moving my head and not really settling on anyone's eyes. Like I had a really hard time because I felt like they would see and know everything that I was having a hard time with in life. And wow. so I never fully allowed myself to be vulnerable, real, 
I acted like I kept my shit together all the time. I acted like I knew everything, not in a bitchy way, but like yeah. I always had the answer kind of thing. And I never let my guard down. Never, not even online. If you go back in all of my photos and shit from like back then, like you would not, you wouldn't even know. Like there's so many people that when I came out and started telling my, my story of how Chuck and I were sexless for 12 years, they're like, what the Ooh. fuck? sexless had, for 12 years yeah they're oh, like shit. I had no idea like you showed up in the same way like how did you do that and I'm like because I had to I had to do it for my clients for my paycheck like I had to I had to do it so it, it's it's been a it's been a tough ride but like every single experience I've gone through I when we come out of it I'm so much stronger and I know myself more and I feel more sexual and I feel like closer to God than ever before. I was so worried that he was going to get mad, but it has not been like that at all. If anything, that was a fucking lie that was trying to keep me from my best. And I truly believe yeah. that was Satan because he knows that when a Christian woman unleashes herself with her husband, uh, there's no stopping that marriage. And his main goal is to stop marriages. And so that's yeah. when he was in my marriage for a long time. And so once I actually understood that and I got to the other side and I saw that God wasn't mad, I literally could feel closer to him and I felt his approving nod. And I felt like, yes, Heather, I've been waiting for you to get here, like to experience this. Now you're going to be unstoppable and now you can show other people how to do this. And it's just been like this most amazing ride ever. Like I love my life so much more now than I ever have before. Yeah. Okay. So same person, you were sexless in your marriage for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Okay. Y you have to share. So why, <laughs> first of all, I'd like to hear that first, but then I want to see like how it's changed once you started connecting and being more intimate and letting your, we don't have to call it a freak flag, but like your sexual feminine energy and connection and vulnerability, how it's helped your marriage. So first of all, like how was that <laughs> 12 years of not sucked, having intimacy? Man. I mean, and it still scares me to this day, you know, and like, I hope we never have to go through that again. Cause that was the most, like, for me, that was the loneliest time in my entire existence to be actually married to somebody sitting right fucking next to them and, you know, feeling confident. Cause by then I had lost all my weight. So I was like a hundred pounds less. I was in a kick-ass body. My butt was like lifted. My stomach was flat. Like I was spinning in the small clothes, all the things I was getting all these compliments from guys and women online. Cause that was my business before yet. Here's this man sitting right next to me, not doing any of that. Like not telling me that I look good, not telling me oh. that I look sexy like not initiating sex, me feeling yeah. like I had to beg for it all the time. Wow. And stuff. Yeah, it was awful. So it started though, to answer your question, it started um, after my youngest son was born. So okay. Josh will be 17 in January. Okay. After he was born, we had tried to have our own kid together for a couple of years. And we had gone through a couple of really horrific miscarriages, which okay. both of them were at about five months. So like I was showing, yeah. we were about to find the sex of the baby. I mean, like I was getting the maternity <laughs> pants on every yeah. day. Yeah. So it was awful. We went through a huge, you know, traumatic stuff. Right. Then when Josh finally came and the doctor released me to have sex again, I was like super pumped. I'm like, yay, <laughs> let's go, let's go. Um, cause he told us we couldn't have sex during, during the whole pregnancy. Cause he, he, you know, you'd never really know what causes a miscarriage. So they, the doctors are like, we just got to try all the things. So don't have sex. <laughs> I was like, okay. So no sex the whole time. So I was like ready to go. And I still remember this to this day. And I talk about this in, in my programs and courses when I'm <laughs> helping other women, but like I approached Chuck in the same manner that I always had that always worked before. He was on the couch. I was feeling sexy. I put on the lingerie. The kids were gone doing something. And so I had that freedom time, you know. I approached him. I put one leg over the other, just like I would normally do. And I went in to like kiss him and do all the things. And he literally took my body. He picked me up off of him and he moved me to the side. 
with no explanation, no explanation at all, none. And I was like, I was like, what? I'm just trying, you know, so yeah. then I was like confused. Mm -hmm. And so he said something like his back hurt or I don't know. He's, he said some excuse. So I, I was like, okay, yeah. no problem. I thought maybe that's what it actually was. Yeah. Well, then a couple of days later, I tried the same thing, same thing happened. And that started a pattern. And he basically just started saying no to me all the time. <gasps> and then I would ask him like, what has, what's changed? Like what happened? He could not give me an answer. Even still to this day, we've gone to counseling. Um, I feel like yeah. he needs to be hypnotized, but he's not open to it, <laughs> but like, um, he still like the whole time. I don't know. I'm what sorry. Is I it? Do you I'm think, sorry. okay. My first thought, you can tell me whether or the not, only thing but is I think is the miscarriages, but yeah, that's the thing I think that the sex hurt you yeah. and especially your husband, your loving husband that doesn't want to hurt you. He probably didn't want to see you in that pain again, that, that stress that, and like watch you because yeah. I know they hide their emotions, old men <laughs> kind of hide their emotions a lot of the time, but it's in there. Right. And like, he's like, well, that equals pain and miserable misery for you. And this is what I keep causing. And it's not, and he probably has a lot more pain than yeah. he even can maybe comprehend. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, and plus so, he doesn't like share his feelings very good either. So yeah. it's very possible that it's something you like that he doesn't even understand. Like I've actually worked with some men clients before and sometimes they don't even know what it is that they're feeling. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it, there's a lot I'm sure that's, that's there. Uh, but what I will say is in the 12 years, I did some things wrong. Okay. Uh, which I know pushed Chuck further away. Okay. Yeah. Let's hear it. Let's uh, hear so it. like one of them was I started to nag him all mm. the time. Like literally I was like keeping track on the calendar, circling the last time I would show it to him. I would make him feel bad about his manhood. Like, Ladies. don't you need the release? don't you need the release? Like, aren't you getting blue balls? Like you work hard. I see you come home stressed. Wouldn't it be nice? if you actually had a release. And then I would use the Bible scripture on him, which is like the ah! worst thing possible. I actually took the Bible and I said, look, God says right here that you are not supposed to deny each other unless it's for a short time and you both got to agree, which obviously we're not in agreement yeah. and it has to be for fasting and prayer. And then it even says so that the enemy doesn't tempt you. And he knows all the things, like he knew all the things, yeah. but still it was not. Ladies. And like, I did that. I pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And I was like a bitch that is, to him. That is the that epitome of masculine energy, trying to get what you want. I yeah. mean, I coach on feminine energy and ladies do not do this. Even if it's, you just want to go on a date, you don't say, take me on a date. Why are you taking me on a date? Nagging is like literally the number one killer in relationships mm -hmm. and they don't want to see you as their mom nagging. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you exactly. got to get in that feminine energy and like <laughs> attract it and be sexy and love them. And give even gratitude. a Bible verse. Yeah. There's a Bible verse that says it's better to live on the house of a roof than to live with a nagging wife. And I actually remember when God showed me that verse, I was like, oh, like I felt like a knife went in me. And I was like, shit, like what else have I possibly been doing that has been pushing Chuck away? So yeah. I went on that mission to figure that out. And then there was quite a bit, yeah. actually. And so when I stopped the nagging, it opened up the space. So then Chuck could relax in my presence yes. so that he could actually like, huh, and actually get to the place of being horny and, and being open and stuff. So that was exactly. where the, our breakthrough uh, started to happen is when I started to work on myself. Yeah. So what helped get you out of, I know you said you did lots and lots of work around this, like, ah, like sex is bad and, you know, just doing missionary and all this stuff. But what helped you believe that like God wants you to have pleasure and God, like God source universe wants you to feel good, wants you to be intimate, wants you to like enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, it was the experience that I had after dance class. And then after I had the bubbling, right, the sensation I explained. So then I actually felt that empowerment feeling and I wanted more of that. So then the more I was tapping into that, the more it opened my, me up. Like I literally felt myself opening up and um, just being, I don't know, just being more open, you know? And so I would experiment just to test the waters and see how I would feel afterwards, you know, with doing like different sexual positions, 
um, using toys, masturbating in front of Chuck, like all the things that I was, you know, told like you shouldn't do. And um, every single experience, I felt good afterwards. Like if anything, our sex life exploded, Tia. Like it became so good. I actually felt God at the center of our sexual experience. And when we orgasmed, it was like the soul, um, the soulgasm. I don't even know how else to describe yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, 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 soulgasm. That, but it was like, we didn't have like uh, orgasms at the same time, but it felt like it because it was like, we were so connected Oh. And we're so in tune with each other so that by the time we were done, I mean, we literally felt like God in the mist and we were like praising God for our orgasms. Like it was <laughs> the best, like it was yes. so fucking good. And so, how did that help your marriage? Obviously it took it to a whole other level. <laughs> yes. Like yeah. God wants your, like God source universe wants your marriage to be good, wants you to be happy, wants you to feel love, wants to have great orgasms that make you feel amazing, that make your life better, right? Like so good. Yes. So good. <laughs> okay. So how now, because you went 12 years. So yeah. how now has it affected your life that now you're making sex a priority? You're having sex, you're having better orgasms and better intimacy. Like what maybe specific ways have you guys? had it seen an improvement on your marriage uh I feel like we're teenagers again <laughs> you know Love it's it. like we've yeah it's like we've tapped into our younger horny uh uninhibited selves yeah before all the rules got put on us and how do you prioritize sex when you have kids oh my god well that's good it's going to be different for every single scenario that, you know, but like with us, our kids are older. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and you know, we've only been on the other side of, you know, the sexlessness for about four years. So at that point, my oldest had already moved out my middle son. I think he was a junior or senior in high school. So he was almost out. And then, um, Josh is super quiet. So he'll just stay in his room and play video games all the time. Um, and so we have a lot of time. Like we literally, I mean, we're almost empty nesters. So, oh yeah. yeah. And one thing that I hear from a lot of women or couples is they're like, oh, but we have kids in our house at all times. And I'm like, well, you got to prioritize a time, mm -hmm. either get a babysitter or like, it's okay. I mean, in my opinion, I don't have kids, so don't shame me, but like, isn't it okay to know. have sex with your kids and then just like in the house they can they're, they're not gonna yes. hear everything yes just but like you know everyone grew up different so depending yeah. on who your partner ends up being when you get married which that's definitely a conversation you should have you know do we have sex when the kids are in the next room like that's definitely a conversation that couples should have before they get married um but that's what we did when the kids were young so we would just set them up with barney or a movie or whatever or like during their nap time and we would just run and do it um, yeah. if we got horny, like, so nothing was really planned with us in particular. I yeah. know some people set dates. I personally don't do that because I feel like for me personally, if I set a date, like we're going to have sex at this time, um, I might not be horny right that second, or I'm, it might take me longer to work myself up for the orgasm. But like, if it's in the moment and the kids are right there, like I personally have no issues with stuffing the kids aside and running upstairs. I just don't. Because I, I'm very much a sexual being. I've always been like that. Even before I fully came out into my full sexuality, I was still a sexual being and wanted to have orgasm and wanted to be close. Like my love language is physical touch. So like the most I can touch mm -hmm. a person, the better. Yeah. So, but that, that's how we did it. But I know not all parents do that. I mean, like we have a lock on our door. Not all parents have a lock on their door. I think that they should, but that's just my personal opinion because I feel like then the kids are ruling the house, not the parents ruling the house. And you don't that's my, wanna... that's my personal opinion. So if you guys yeah. are doing that, it's yeah. okay, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> personal opinion. There's yeah. always solutions is what I just want to say is there's always yes, solutions there always and it's okay for your, your mom and dad to be intimate. Like, of course they don't want to see, but like it is, it shows that they're loving and they love each other and they like connection. It teaches your kids like, to have, you know, kisses and hugs and right. love when they yeah. go get married, exactly. in my opinion. Yep. So, I believe so 
and just finding a time or, okay, it's bedtime. If they're like a certain age, don't bother mommy and daddy, like right. lights off, go to bed. I don't know. I, I have an episode on this. So ladies and gentlemen, go check it out. It's like <laughs> how to prioritize intimacy and sex in a marriage. Yeah. So there's, I mean, there's of always things. a car. You know I mean, we, we went out to the car a couple of times, you know, when the kids got older, when they were teens by that time. Um, and then they understood the noises, you know, what they were. <laughs> so we would just go in our car and, and just even in the driveway, we'd just go in the car and they, they'd be in the house or we'd drive away and go park like pretty close to our house and, and do it somewhere else. So, I mean, there's always a way. Yeah. And then you have like a better intimacy connection, communication, feel mm-hmm. closer. Maybe your marriage will last longer. <laughs> yes, it will. No, it, it will last longer. Uh, I always say, like, you want to be the one to give what your husband needs. You don't want him to go and search it out somewhere else. So, I mean, if he's got some fantasies or got some needs or something, figure out what they are and do the best you can to fulfill them, you know, as long as you're comfortable and it doesn't bring up any issues from like an abuse or something from the past. But I mean, other than that, there's always a work through so that the both of you guys are happy. Communication. Yes. Like communicate your needs, communicate your desires, communicate your fantasies. And my biggest thing is it doesn't have to be with an expectation. In fact, don't have an expectation. Sometimes sharing a fantasy can just bring you guys closer and yep. feel more intimate and you don't have to fulfill it. Like right. that's a good part is like one of my past relationships, they weren't really into BDSM, but we like gave it a little bit of a try, like little, some light stuff. He wasn't into it, but it was okay to share like my fantasies or talk about it. And it was okay if we gave it a try and he didn't want it. Like you never have to fulfill somebody's like every need and fantasy, but you can play with it and talk to him about it and communicate. And that's the big part. And kind of like, even do it without actually doing it. Like you could be having sex with your partner and you could just say like, okay, right now I'm doing this to you. And right now, and, and it's turning me, I mean, you can put, do a visual fantasy and yeah. speak it without actually doing the action, you know, behind yeah. it. So that's really fun too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. I'm so happy to have you on. I just want to finish that. Like, ah, uh, another thing is like, if you believe in God and God gave you a clit, which has 8,000, <laughs> is it 8,000 nerve endings? Yes. <laughs> 8,000. Then mm-hmm. why, why in the world would we have a clit that's only for pleasure yep. if God didn't want us to have pleasure? And, and that we can actually with our own hand as a woman, give ourselves pleasure. That, that's why, that's why it's really important too, because like, if, if it was up to the man to give the woman pleasure only, then he would be the only one that when he touched you, you could feel it. So I'm like, no. That, that whole pro- thought process that man has to be the one to give us our, our orgasm, I think is so stupid, but um, that's me on the other side of this now. You know, I used to yeah. think the same thing, so I totally get it. But uh, now I'm like, no, if he, if he gave it for females to be able to actually tap into that pleasure, then that must, there must be a reason behind that. So get into it. Like God has given it to you. <laughs> so use it and, and explore. So that way you can actually share with your partner what turns you on. And you guys will have an even better sex life because now you know, and then you can tell him and he's not trying to guess and you guys aren't ending up in frustration and all the things you know that can happen. Yeah. I mean, it's super men. It's a lot more simple. You know, ABC equals blah, blah, blah. Like it's easy. One, two, three, you're good. But women, we're a lot more complex. We have all these different, like, it's like we have a thousand different buttons and you can't just <laughs> judge based off of other partners. I love that about us. I love yeah. it. <laughs> so we have to learn ourselves so we can guide our partner. We have to learn ourselves so we can get there easier and faster right. and understand our orgasm and understand our turn-ons because we are different and we are more complicated. So I hate when I hear women say like, well, he should know me or he should learn or he should blah, 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 blah. And only putting it on the man when right. we're a lot more complicated. <laughs> yeah. And we have to voice it. We can't just assume that they know. And plus, if you guys have had other partners before, every single person is different. Yeah. Like got all guys don't like their dick suck the same way. All yeah. women don't like getting eaten out the same way or fingering the same way, you know? So it's really just getting in tune with your partner and figuring out what they like. And then, you know, giving that to them. 
Yes. Well, everybody tuning in, if you are struggling with this and you want to improve your marriage and you're maybe you're engaged and you really need like a coach, maybe because you have all this fear or maybe it's a time you want to save time, like stop trying to do it on your own. Go hit her up, hit her up in the DMs. What's your Instagram? And I will have the link. So if you just say the name, I'll definitely have the yes. links in the bio. I am everywhere. <laughs> Same thing at sex coach Heather on Instagram, Clubhouse, Facebook, all, all the places. Yes. And me and Heather do rooms on Clubhouse and it's really fun. She did a really great event about yeah, a, a couple blast, weeks man. ago. <laughs> yeah, it was so I'm good. Like, I want to redo it. that. <laughs> that yes. was so much fun. We'll have to do it again. So go check her out. And thank you so much for being on. And just remember, ladies and gentlemen, that God, universe, source, like whatever you believe, I want you to know that you deserve pleasure and you deserve orgasms. Amen. <laughs> Thanks to you. <Amen. laughs> yeah, thank you.